iPhone sales in China score big jump. How about that? Well, you didn't see that coming. They're doing really well. Uh, trade, trade stuff, trade wars, boycott, Apple boycott, nationalism, pride. We heard all these stories. Mm-hmm. People saying that Apple was about to take a big dive, specifically in China. It appears, at least for now, temporarily, possibly temporarily, that's not really the way it's going. In fact, this latest iPhone, the release, saw a jump of 18.7% growth from a year ago. Now, I know it's not exactly a fair comparison, Will. I know that. You know that, I know that, because this iPhone is visibly different, whereas the S model iPhone X was kind of more iterative. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, they had the R to go with it, but this 11, you see it, you know it. And I keep saying this is important when it comes to sales. It's not just that there's an improvement. It's not just that the thing is better. It's people around you need to look at it. It has to have that element. The style component. Yes. And I'm telling you, man, I'm watching the NBA game. I'm watching a game in the NBA. Do you? Yeah, I was. And I look at the sidelines, and I can spot that triple-headed monster from a mile away. Mm. I see some lady, you know, she's doing what you would do Mm -hmm. at an NBA game getting it out, and it has to be that calling card so people know you're on the latest. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not telling people they need to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not telling people they need to be in that race, on that treadmill, smartphone treadmill. But I'm saying this stuff, generally speaking, it has an effect and an impact. There are, There is a significant enough group of people that they want to be on that latest. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be seen with that old thing. They won't. They won't be seen with that. With that iPhone, six S, no. seven, eight, ten, you name it. They just are always on the latest one. And this one had that working for it, where from a distance, it instantly made the case. It was recognizable as being that new thing from Apple. So I think you can attribute some of this percentage growth to that fact alone. But nonetheless, amidst all the turmoil within the trade scenario. Um, uh, amidst the, the the Donald Trump and so forth, which we've covered widely here, it's still surprising to me. You have this massive price tag. I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. thousand plus, and I believe in relationship to that market, I think a Chinese iPhone actually is a little bit more. It might be a few more dollars. I can't remember. It used to be at least. Mm-hmm. And so you say, okay, cost sensitivity, all these things, competition in the marketplace, the stuff that Huawei is doing, they're making a case domestically, don't uh, support us. Support your local, because we're getting all kinds of heat elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So they make the case to the public. And yet still, Apple is improving their figures over there. Now they say here in this particular document that it's thanks to the popularity of the iPhone 11, according to Bloomberg. And the calculations are based on government data and overall shipments. The improvement in December iPhone sales in China, despite a lack of 5G readiness, is quite positive for Apple and its suppliers, Hmm. according to analysts. So that's a big part, too. That's a big, you know, this 5G conversation going on, being led, headlined by Huawei. Mm -hmm. Is that really what's going to move the needle for customers or is it a marketing marketing head start? I presume it will matter to customers, but maybe they need to experience it first. Maybe they need to see what that means for them on a day-to-day for them to demand it in their next smartphone. Right. Maybe that's what it'll take. Surge in shipments bodes well for Apple smartphone sales for the Chinese New Year which occurs in late January. So it, this could be an indicator of what's going to happen around that time as well. A lot of spending going on around that time in China specifically. So 
This article coming via Seeking Alpha, it's all about the analysis. It's all about the stock market. A-A-P-L. That's Apple on the NASDAQ, Will. Mm. But you already know that because you're that guy around here. Yep. And they're doing well. And it keeps, you know, keeps going. Money's never been a problem for Apple. Nope. At least not lately. I'll tell you what. Now, it doesn't change the fact that every upstart company in the world has Apple in the crosshairs and they're still coming. Mm -hmm. And that value is still out there. And people are watching this right now saying, Lou, I would never, I wouldn't do it. I ain't buying that. I care about these 18%. I got that one plus. I spent five, six hundred. I don't go there near that thousand dollar thing. Apple tax and so forth. You've heard it before. Mm. So I understand that too. But this is what it is for the time being. That's the number. That's the figure. So Apple, China, is still happening. There's still a bit of a love affair. S small one. Yes. It could grow. It could shrink. Time will tell. iPhone 11, embraced. I got an iPhone 11 sitting right over there. Don't ask me why. There you go. How dare you? You hear about these Samsung artificial humans, Will? Yeah, I didn't think so. I did. <laughs> oh, you did? Well done. Yeah, just, just a, a little bit. Just out there doing your job. Yes. Keeping your ear to Somewhere. the street. The street, of course, for the time being, meaning CES 2020. Yeah. That's where it's all happening. I have my ear to the ground. Good for you, Will. That's not easy to do. Guy no. like you. You're a busy guy. Take yes. Otis, the dog park. Light yeah. the candle over on the side there. Find time to get to the spa. Tons of dog park and spa. Otis is a different guy when he goes to the dog park. You got to bring him there. Oh, yeah. He's running. Uh -huh. He's jumping. He's sniffing. He's being a dog. A lot of sniffing. He's being yeah. a dog. Plus, he's got part husky in him, so you got to put him in the snow every so often. Mm -hmm. He needs to mush once in a while. It's right in there. It's in the DNA. Deeply embedded. Well, Samsung, it's in their DNA. Project Neon. 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 Neon, Neon Cat. <laughs> it's Project Neon Cat. Whatever happened to stuff like that? What was it? Usually 20, 20 hours worth of Neon Cat on YouTube? Whatever happened to that? Yeah. People don't do stuff like that anymore. That was like when the internet was cute. Uh -huh. Now the internet's so angry. There's nothing cute. I know. Are you kidding me? Cute. Get out of my face. Everything's too dramatic. Yeah, everyone's yelling, yeah. screaming. Yeah, Samsung has Project Neon, and they're calling uh, these things artificial humans. Samsung's subsidiary, Star Labs, has officially unveiled its mysterious artificial human. So this is, again, CES, and it's a company within under the Samsung umbrella somewhere. This is The Verge reporting, and they're saying... That they, they're developing another species, Will. Because humans are good. Other animals are pretty good. You got dolphins and uh, giraffes we covered on a previous episode. Yeah. But we need to go. We need another one as well. Uh, this is a quote from the CEO of Star Labs. There are millions of species on our planet, and we hope to add one more. Hmm. And a bold statement. Some kind of God mode. We just, we're just going to add one more. Is it a species if it's uh, zeros and ones? Look, I know you're upset. <laughs> and I well, hear you. I'm just curious. I hear you. I agree with you. Obviously, the guy's taking his liberties here, but he, he also probably worked pretty hard, Will. I mean... He probably spent uh, uh, evenings, nights and evenings. Him. He put in the extra... He put the overtime. I respect in. that. He put the overtime in. Yeah. And you don't even want to let him say species. I mean... Yeah, I hear you. It's all digital. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, he says neon is like a new kind of life. He, cause he doesn't want to get wrapped up in the whole AI thing. He doesn't want to get wrapped up in the Alexa talk. Uh, that wouldn't be exciting. Oh, you got Alexa with an avatar. Yeah. Get out of my face. That's what people would say. So he has, he goes this route and then maybe look, we're talking about it. Cause, cause he says, cause he says artificial human, but let's, but to be honest, I mean, here's the take from the verge and it's, it makes sense. They're saying, well, this is just a, this is an avatar. It's a digital avatar. Maybe it looks more like a person. But here's the thing. Here's the key. Who really knows? Because apparently at their demonstration, they weren't even showing off the tech. It was all kind of maybe stuff. 
Apparently, right. it was real people that they were kind of pretending were behaving like these eventual avatars. So you never, you didn't really get to see what these AI generated avatars were going to look like. But the game plan here is that eventually you end up with something capable of doing certain tasks. I said something because I didn't want to say species because that felt rude. Yeah. To go back there, species. Uh, so they say here it can be customized for different tasks and it can respond to queries with latency of less than a few milliseconds. Computationally generated. Here's a quote. In the near future, one will be able to license or subscribe to a neon. To a neon. That's your slave, Will, in the future. Excuse me, I'm going to go. Excuse me, I got a bunch of stuff for my neon to take care of. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Neon, can you just handle all those? Uh, you're going to be yelling and screaming. You're going to be yelling and screaming. You're going to be yelling and screaming at your neon. Yeah. I'm going to have to settle you down. Uh huh. Would neon have feelings? They probably do. That would be inconvenient. Inconvenient feelings. Yeah. In the future, there's no feelings in the future. I thought you knew that. Well, that's how they get you to not enslave them. To have feelings. Mm. So you kind of feel bad for them. So all of a sudden you're saying please and thank you. Yeah. We talked about that. Alexa. If it all of a sudden it like appears like a, a person, it could be uh, bad for you to not see it as a species. Maybe that's why he comes like that with mm -hmm. the terminology. Because eventually... It, you, you look at this avatar and you're rude to it because you're like, well, it doesn't have feelings. Yeah. Then you get out in public and you forget. Yeah. This real life, these ain't these aren't neons. And they both look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Could be bad for you. Anyway. Yeah. In the near future, one will be able to license or subscribe to a neon as a service representative, a financial advisor, a healthcare provider, or a concierge. Over time, neons will work as TV anchors, spokespeople, or movie act. That's me. I'm a neon now because oh. I'm a movie actor. You didn't know that. Uh, uh, what were you Avengers in? Endgame, I was in that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, were you? yeah. What were you? I was just in a big crowd. Oh. There was a big fight at the end. I'm just in that crowd. You're just holding a yeah. sword or something? Yeah. Or they can simply be companions and friends. You're neon. So... But this is what CES is about. You got to have these type of con you got to have these things going on. Mm. Somebody's got to be doing artificial something, and if you can call it a species, you can get some press. You can get a you can get an article on the Verge, and you can get us to talk about it. So good for you, Samsung subsidiary Project Neon. There you go. We had to talk about some project, something with project in the headline coming out of CES had to happen. Project. Would you have something like this? Yeah, we put them right over here. I mean, right here. <laughs> can can we just do a neon that looks like me? Yeah. Go over the stories. Interact with the people out there in the world. Uh, there ain't no neon me, Will. Stop it. No, as like an assistant in your house. Oh, you. So you're neon. <laughs> a neon right over there? No. What, what, they, what would they do for me in the house? I don't know. Like something like smart home, turn on your blind. Okay, so like a more advanced and... Alexa that has a visual appearance. Yeah, it's and like it's, hologram or it's something. It's hologram. Yeah, all right, sure. Why not? I don't know. Future's weird, man. You know that. People are mad about... This one you definitely know about, Will. People are mad about the PS5 logo. Oh, they're irate. Mm. Uh, yelling. What do you think about it? What do you think about this PS5 logo? What do I think about it? I mean, this is the most appropriate logo, right? They okay, you're with they me. They can't try You're with else. me. Yeah, I don't know. This was weird. I saw, honestly, a lot of tech websites cover this. I saw this on Twitter. It's kind of, a, you know, the meme thing. And yeah. I was I was sitting there thinking, I don't care at all. <laughs> what's wrong with me? Do I have a problem? I do not well, care. Well, what's wrong with the logo? Well, well, what they're saying, okay, here on the next web, he's saying it looks like they gave up by not generating a new one. But it, honestly, I swear, and I've had every single PlayStation... It didn't even cross my mind. When I first yeah. saw the announcement, I was looking at the logo like, what's wrong with it? I, I, double, I had to have a double take because people were so mad. I'm like, what's wrong with it? And then, of course, I had to read through and people say, oh, they just, they were lazy because it looks like the PS4 logo. 
Do you? But do you have to have a new logo every time? <laughs> it looked like the PS4 logo looks like the PS3 logo. I know, but if you like, scroll down here, you'll see that the PS2 and 3 logo at launch had something different going on ever so slightly. PS2 is a cool logo for sure. And then PS3, when it came out, they had PlayStation 3 in a Spider-Man style. Yeah. Uh, but then they got rid of it in 2009, as you can see in this article here. And they went to the PS3, which looks like the PS4 and PS5 now. Do you think um, part of this outrage is because Sony made an announcement just for the logo? Probably. Because it was just about. that. They didn't show the console Look, Will, or anything. Look, you like know that. and I know. We've been to CES. Whether you're making videos or writing articles or just a, just a guy on Twitter, you got to have a take. You can't just not have anything to talk about. You can't go there uh, to the... To the uh, to the press room where they give you the little lunch box. Yeah. You go to the press room, you show your badge, they give you a little lunch box. It has a sandwich. It has a small bag of chips. It has a an apple if you're lucky. And then an internet connection. That's what they give you in the press room. I usually skipped the that box lunch. Yeah. Cuz there's buffets, I told you already. There's buffets in, in buffets Vegas. In there's Vegas. Rest, there's great restaurants. It's one of the underrated things about Vegas is you can actually get good food in Vegas. Yes. Very Not necessarily so. the buffets. The buffets actually can kind of be a letdown sometimes. You have a high expectation. But some of the restaurants actually will surprise you. Mm. Uh, I went to the Greek place in, I don't know. Why do we got to get these details? Yeah, I'm hungry. Um, so you got to pick something to write about, Will, and you're sitting at that event. Sony dragged you out there, told you to come. They sent the emails. You, 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 you're sitting in the event. I got to say something. And then you see the PS5 logo, and you're like, that's a hot, that's a hot one. Hotter than anything else they gave you. So you're right, Will. Had they done it all at once and they had an actual system, it would have been glossed over. No one would have talked about the exactly, logo. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but... I'm going to be a weird one on this and just say I I kind of like the uniformity there. I like that they stay true to it and don't try to completely reinvent it every time. I There's going to be some designers in the crowd that are sitting there saying, I had I have so many ideas and why would you not want to be creative? I could have done this and that. But there's something comforting to me at least about the PS, PS3, PS4, PS5 mm -hmm. logos. I feel fine with it. I'm mm -hmm. comfy. So that's my personal take. I don't know. It seems to be yours too. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I didn't set this up. I mean, that just happened to be your take. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, do we have to change it every single year? I guess this I, is a comforting look, you know, with the same logo. The so we just solved one it. On the we just solved it for the public. PS5 logo is fine. You heard it here. <laughs> that's our take. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. You heard it here. Uh, here's something from CES that this guy from Android Central is definitely buying. And I'm kind of with him a little bit here. I think this is, sometimes it's the simplest things, Will. Now, granted, this is not the first version of this. It's a delivery box. You stand, you put it at the front door if you, or I order off, everything's off Amazon. Yes. It's, it's coming in. It's going. The box is, I told you, my garage, is it's a shipping and receiving facility hmm. in the garage. Box is coming in. Box cutters, I'm folding. Doing the recycling has become... It's, a, it's, my, it's my other job. Yes. I have this job and unbox therapy in this. I have sports and I have recycling. Mm. It's my whole life. You're going to go home and cut some boxes. Up. I'm going to go and start. I got the Christmas tree out on the road today. Dragging it out, needles everywhere. Three different vacuums I was trying to deal with that. So anyway, this is part of modern life in 2020, is you're getting the, the boxes delivered to the doors. I'm guessing this is uh, chained up. You do right. you do as you please with the chain, <laughs> and maybe you want to just uh, put a bolt into the... Yeah. I don't know what yeah. you want to do. Maybe you want to uh, put a camera on it still which some people might do. but So these things have existed, these boxes, little lock box you put beside the door, but the trouble is using them, right? Who's unlocking and when and how? And do I see on the camera, then I unlock because I see it's the UPS guy or the FedEx guy. 
or uh, is there a code? Amazon themselves was trying to do, we'll put it in your garage or just let us in the house. Remember that? Yeah, 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 with the smart lock. Nobody, nobody liked that. Yeah. Everyone was scared of that one. I'm letting you in the house. Now what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Kick your feet up. You go over to the, make yourself a coffee. Or your dog bites the, uh, well, that's your, man. that would yeah, be your issue. Is. That would be <laughs> your issue. So no one felt fully comfy with that. So you needed this kind of in between. And what's cool about this one, first of all, it's affordable. Number one, it's like 150 bucks. So affordable, 129. Affordable compared to probably the packages you're going to put in it. And of course, the, the idea here is, is all about the porch pirates. It's all about stopping the easy theft. Mm. And the nice thing is the feature within the app is that it locks after it's opened once. So... Let me explain this to you, Will. It's open when it's empty. But when the package gets dropped in and the lid gets closed, then it's locked. So you, there's no extra stuff. You don't have to get dialed and answer the door and look at the camera. Mm -hmm. It's just once the FedEx guy's done then, and there's something inside of it, then it's locked. Because what good is it to have it locked when there's nothing in it? Right. That you have to then be bothered to go unlock it. You might not use it because it's a little bit of an extra hassle. So that's the idea behind this, is it has, it has some slightly cooler features right within the thing. Now, the porch pirate types, and this is a valid argument, they could look at this thing and say, oh, somebody who has that, they get the hot packages. Because they felt yeah, inclined. they're to, prepared, you know. Those are the packages I want. So like you said, you got to say, I gotta, you got to secure it somehow. But then you got the, the guy with the sledgehammer. Mm. Who's a, he's a guy. He was also in Avengers Endgame. Thor? No, in the credits, guy with a sledgehammer. Oh. It was separate. He, there was Thor, and then there was guy with a sledgehammer. And it was just a regular guy with a sledgehammer. Yeah. He was, he was an extra. He could, he could have filled in for Thor had there been an issue with uh, Hemsworth. He was fighting Thanos. Yeah. With the sledgehammer. Could have filled in. He was in shape. Mm -hmm. Could have filled in and taken the other, other hammer to instead of the sledgehammer. He was ready. You can't do anything about it, Will. If somebody wants to get in there that badly, and they could, they could, they could bring an AK-47. And yeah. if someone wants to mess with you that badly, I think what you're trying to do here is just an extra layer, mm -hmm. a little extra time where they look at it and say, "Ah, I'll go to the next place." It's like having a dog barking at the door. It's just a little bit of extra. So, will people use it? Maybe we'll have to wait and see. But the number of reports coming out of CES about this thing seem to be, it seems to imply to me that maybe they finally nailed it. Hmm. The company, by the way, is called Yale. And uh, this, this device here comes alongside a Wi-Fi bridge. And the whole thing is 129 bucks coming out. And I think some people are going to be interested. Now, I don't, I don't personally have the porch pirate issue, so I can't speak to it. But I do sometimes feel a little bit weird Something something expensive shows up. It's just sitting there. Yeah, just right there. Just sitting there in the box, and certainly part of the porch pirate thing is just the the ease of it. I think mm -hmm. it's low friction. Just walk up, take the box. You mm -hmm. introduce just a couple extra layers of friction. Maybe in the future, everybody has one of these boxes, mm -hmm. and so they can be at home with their PS Five. And their neon species and their new iPhone, because Apple's gonna survive the future thanks to their relationship with China.